Look what just came in the mail! Trident Z DDR5 from G Skill. This is 5600 CL3636 36 76 1.2 volts. I bought this with my own money. DDR5's weird. Let's take a look. <laughs> So a lot of the coverage so far around DDR4 versus DDR5, which is, you know, the first platform to use this is Alder Lake. So there's a lot of excitement here. Intel's back, 16 cores, B cores and E cores, a lot of, lot of fun stuff. But a lot of the consensus so far is that there's not really a lot of difference between DDR4 and DDR5 in terms of day-to-day -day performance. A good kit of DDR4 versus pretty much the only kit of DDR5 you can buy. Well, this is the beginning of the change of that. We're not there yet. I mean, this is DDR5 5600. This is the fastest DDR5 kit that I have. Even with this kit, we're not gonna see, you know, double digit performance improvements moving up from DDR4. I've got two gigabyte motherboards that are basically identical. It's just that one's a DDR4 layout and the other one is a DDR5 layout. And so I've got the, the Aorus Master outfitted with the Trident Z G Skill DDR5 memory. And G Skill, to be sure, they have changed their aesthetic just a little bit. I mean, it's definitely the Trident Z aesthetic, but it's a little more refined. The aluminum is a little shinier. The RGB, pretty much the same. The thing to look for on DDR5, XMP 3.0 ready. I plugged it in, I said XMP 3.0. I was basically good to go. But there are still DDR5 rough edges. Not every motherboard is there, and you're pretty much gonna need to update your BIOS. So if this is your first foray into Alder Lake and you did opt to build the DDR5 system, as soon as you get the system to post, before you install any operating systems or anything like that, be sure you update your BIOS. Even now, almost three months from Alder Lake launch at the time that I'm doing this video, the time that the CPUs launched, we're getting new motherboard BIOSes about every week, about every other week. And I'm sorry to report that using four sticks of DDR5 in most motherboards is a little bit problematic, especially when we're talking about speeds like 5600. Now, this is one of the few motherboards that has had good support for 5600 for the last little bit that I've been playing with this. I've had to sort of fiddle with some of the other boards that I have that are DDR5. But no board really is what I would call production ready for DDR5 5600 with four sticks of memory. I think that'll change. I think it's just a software problem. We might see some stealth PCB revisions, maybe. Maybe that was just because DDR5 was so scarce, but this system has been really stable. It's built around the 12900KF, and I also had the 12900K in here, but for some reason this 12900KF is a little bit later in terms of the production date, and it seems like Intel might have uh, improved some things in their production line as well, because this does really well when I'm sort of juicing it. This is 1.2 volts out of the box. You can give it more volts and squeeze a little bit more out of it. I don't recommend memory overclocking in general, but it's useful for experimentation because you put it in a motherboard and maybe 5600 at you know, CL36 is not perfectly stable. Maybe you bump it up to 1.25 volts and then, hey, it's perfectly stable. Or maybe you mess around with the, uh, you know, the voltages that are being fed into the CPU at various stages. It's like, oh yeah, now I've achieved stability. That's, that's maybe a video for another day. I really want to talk about the performance of this kit. I'm using ADA64 on Windows 11 to run our test here on Alder Lake. We're getting 86 gigabytes per second. DDR5, sometimes you see people report it as quad channel. That's not technically inaccurate, but the amount of bits that a DDR5 DIMM moves per channel is not as many as DDR4, but there's two channels on each DIMM that is more to do with timing and synchronization than bandwidth. So it's not like you've got a dramatic bandwidth increase because of that. It just, you get, you claw back a little bandwidth from the inefficiencies that you overcome by having two channels on one dim. But it's not like the channels are the same width. They're half as wide on DDR5. So you might see some places report, oh, it's quad channel. It's not really quad channel. It's, 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 it's a convention thing. And I'm, I'm making it worse, <laughs> trying to explain it properly. But two DIMMs, two DIMMs in the motherboard, two DDR5 DIMMs in the motherboard, 86 gigabytes, 85, 86 gigabytes per second. That is mainly due to the ridiculously insane <laughs> 5600 clock speed. You know, DDR3 days quad channel, this is pretty close to quad channel performance on DDR3 platforms with only two memory channels. 
gosh, I can't wait for DDR5 speeds in servers. That's going to be nice. That's going to be really super nice. The other thing to look at here is the latency. It's only 70 nanoseconds. Now, you could achieve like 50 nanoseconds on the previous generation with the highest end DDR4 kit. And that's why I say, it's like, well, if you've got a good DDR4 kit, it's going to be about the same performance as DDR5, even though this is one of the highest performing DDR5 kits you can get. So this is edging out DDR4 when we look at performance like, you know, raw throughput, raw bandwidth. That kind of thing. The latency is, is sort of creeping up there. The latency, if you look at the latency over time from DDR to DDR2, 3, 4, uh, it's kind of leveling off. It's not really getting dramatically worse, but it's also not getting dramatically better. You know, in the beginning with the move to DDR, uh, the latency was going down there for a while, and then we just sort of we've plateaued at kind of a minimum latency in the 50 to 80 range, depending on your, your CPU architecture. And that's a pretty big range, don't get me wrong. Uh, as this is the Intel platform, we are working in Gear 2. You'll see that most commonly on, on Alder Lake. The only other thing worth mentioning is the bank cycle time is 112 cycles, which is pretty impressive at 5600. There are DDR4 kits that have an insane bank cycle time, and uh, those kits generally, it's like, oh, this one's 3600, but it has an insane bank cycle time. It's like, nah, that'll actually be slower than 3200 kits, depending. Those secondary timings can really make more of an impact than a lot of people realize. Anyway, this has been a quick look at the G-Skill Trident Z DDR5 5600 kit. It definitely has the level 1 seal of approval. This is the 32 gigabyte kit. I really wouldn't recommend less than 32 gigabytes for Alder Lake. I mean, come on. Two 16 gig sticks, pretty much the minimum these days, I'd say. I'm Wendell, this is level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level 1 forums.